and welcome to PM Express. My name is Nana Sapa the fourth, and today I'm coming to you with a very, very special guest. Who is he? He is the new ambassador uh, to Ghana representing EU, and he must have a huge responsibility. Now, this guy is carrying 27 countries on his shoulder to come and see how they're going to integrate with Ghana, help each other, or Major, or whatever it is, we are yet to find out. But before I start the interview, I just want to find out what his first impression is at. His name is Mr. William Hammer. William, you're welcome to Ghana. Thank you very much, Nana. It's nice to be here. Thank you. William, I just want to find out what your first impression is. So well, first impressions, actually, it's not, it's not the first time I've been in Ghana. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and I've been uh, in Africa before. I've been posted in in Cameroon in the early 1990s and in Tanzania, Tanzania from 2000 to 2004. Uh, but Ghana, I, I visited, um, I think it was 1999, so that's about 15 years ago. Okay. okay. And I was, uh, in Brussels, I was dealing with West Africa, Burkina Faso and Mali, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire and Liberia. Uh, and I came, I came twice um, for different meetings. And I remember one time I came down, I went first of all to Burkina and then from Burkina I came by car. Um, down from Burkina all the way along the road, Kumasi Takoradi, across to, to Accra, and saw a little bit of the country uh, before, before coming here. So I had, I had a, a sort of strong impression, and I was very pleased when I got a chance to be posted to Ghana. Um, I mean, I think my, my impressions were, were um, of a number of things, of a, of a, a, a country which is uh, uh, where democracy, uh, democracy stability is, is important, where there's been peace. Um, a country with a, a growing economy um, and a very warm welcome from the people of Ghana. Very colourful country. So I, th those are the impressions I had before I came here, and they've been confirmed uh, in the in the month that I've I've, I've been. Uh, Ghana has done very well <coughs> since then. Um, it's grown at a very high level. Um, Accra, I find difficult to recognise. I'm not sure where I am. I see lots of new buildings everywhere, uh, and of course some of the problems that come with development, some of the traffic jams and so on. We see. Uh, but the economy has done well. Uh, the country has uh, consolidated its democracy, which is, which is important in, in a region where there's a lot of instability. Uh, and I find the people very warm and welcoming, so that, that hasn't changed. So I've, I have very good first impressions, uh, and I'm looking forward to, to work here for the next few years. Well, we look forward to having you here. Uh, you've, been to, I mean, you've worked in Cameroon, you've worked in Tanzania, seen a bit of Ghana. What, what are the major differences between well, differences uh, I don't know I mean it's I went over the weekend I went uh, to the eastern region I think you're from the eastern region yes, and I went uh, to the eastern yeah, region and at one stage we got outside of Accra and there were baboons and and all going on the road and there was there was space there was space and and hills and and I, I felt I'm, I'm 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 in Africa I'm back in Africa <laughs> you know that, that 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 feeling of space Tanzania is a be very beautiful country, and, and they've preserved a lot of their natural uh, part of the country, so uh, it, it, it's very beautiful. Uh, Cameroon, I remember Cameroon was very wooded and very, very, very diverse country, very, very diverse. Uh, so c countries are different. Uh, there are some things that are the same. Uh, the birds in Ghana, I'm, 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 the, you know, there, there are many, many species of birds yeah. in this country, and I'm seeing new species. If I interrupt now, look, look out the windows, because I've seen some new species of bird. And there, are, there are more species of bird in Ghana than in the whole of Europe. So uh, it's lovely to see the nature. A I'm a bird watcher, ah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> but I can't, I can't recognize some of the birds. I can't recognize them. So, you know, so the, the nature, uh, uh, the, 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 the countryside, the high skies, the blue skies, it's, not, it's good to be back in Africa. Uh, people are people are similar, I think. Uh, but uh, it'll take me a while to get to know Ghana and to to go around the country. But uh, people seem to be very friendly. People seem to be very interested in what we're doing in Europe. And I've just had a press conference uh, with a lot of uh, tough questions uh, and and knowledgeable questions. I think people people are following international affairs. Uh, uh, they're aware of the role that Ghana can play. So it's it's it'll be challenging. It'll be good fun. So, so, so. so what do you bring on board? I was just going to ask that. <laughs> what do I bring? Yes. What, what, do, I, what do I bring? Well, I mean, I was talking a little bit we, we, with, with the staff and the delegation. You know, we've had a delegation here for, for a long time. I think this, this building has been here for maybe 30 years. So we've had a lot of cooperation with, with Ghana over the years. Uh, and I know quite a few of the people who have been in this job before. I don't know why, but uh, 
almost all of them have been people I've got to know who've been my friends over the years, seen them in other, uh, other, other countries. I remember Stefan Frowan was here for a long time, very good friend of mine. Uh, Filiberto Sebergondi was here. So I've been, I've been following Ghana from, from, from a distance. But I, I'm talking to people who know Ghana and, and to talk with great affection about their time in Ghana. But, but I think that um, uh, what we're trying to do now is perhaps to move to a, a more, um, a different relationship, a, a, a more of a partnership with Ghana. I think maybe in the past we've had a lot of projects, development projects, and some of them have succeeded and others of them would be difficult to find remains of, of all that. But, but um, I think we're, we're moving towards a, a, a new relationship in challenging times for, for the world. Uh, I mean, the world is facing a lot of, of crises which can only be solved through international cooperation. Uh, and so we have more to do. Um, so we will continue our development cooperation and we'll try to continue to implement projects that improve the, the, the lives of people. And I like to get out and visit projects and see them and see that the money has been properly spent and, 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 and look at, at, at the projects we're implementing. So that's one part which we will continue. But I think we want to move towards more trade and more investment in the future. Uh, I think Ghana has done well, it's developed, it's grown strongly. But for it to continue and to provide jobs for the people, for the young people of Ghana, I think we need to look more at, at, at how we can use the opportunity, which is the trade access and the interest of Europe in investing to, to be in our mutual interests. I mean, let's be, let's be frank. I think it, we're interested in Ghana. Ghana is interested in the European Union. Let's see how we can work together to, to, uh, to move forward. So I see a, a more emphasis on trade and investment and more also on uh, political questions, questions that concern us in the future. Migration is an issue uh, that we need to look at. So many issues where we need to, we need to sit down, have a, have a dialogue and see you know, what's in the best interest of citizens in Europe, what's in the best interest of, of Ghana. So I, I see a, a partnership which is a long-standing partnership but moving in new directions. Investment, you, you tend to find most of the investment don't focus in agriculture and production. 65% mm. uh, of the population has in agriculture, mm. and to guarantee any meaningful employment, you need the production side. Mm. Are we going to continue the status quo where the investment is more, you know, just capital intensive, you take your money and go out, and then it doesn't create so much jobs? How do you ensure that, you know, investments well, go into... Yeah. That yeah, well, I, mean, I think it's it's very much for Ghana to decide what what path it wants to go on and how it wants to develop. I've seen some work done by some of the think tanks, and I've met some of the people from the the thinkers of thinking the future in Ghana, and they've suggested a number of areas that Ghana could move into. Uh, of course, it's competing with the rest of the world in those areas, but Ghana could move into certain areas which would be more bringing more jobs, and I think that's that's important. Um, just listening to the radio and watching television, you know, I see that young people in Ghana need jobs. Uh, and it's in our interest that they should have good jobs in, 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 in Ghana. So if you're moving in, in, in that area, and I think it's for the country to set the agenda, you know, looking for, for uh, uh, manufacturing, um, well then uh, you need investment coming in uh, in that area. Um, Europe is interested in doing that. Um, I've seen, I've seen this, that strategy, a sort of export strategy su succeeding in other countries. You need to have the market, you need to bring in the, the, the skilled entrepreneurs, you need to work with local people who, who know, uh, know this area, and maybe you know, develop, develop that. I mean, I think you, start with, you also start with what you have. I mean, you start with the basis, there are, there are Ghana is exporting, agriculture is important, I think it's important to consolidate that, but you, know, you can move around it into agro-industry, there, there are different areas. Um, it's for the experts to, si to see where Ghana has a, a, an advantage uh, and for the government, the people of Ghana to set that strategy. And then, then I think Europe is interested and Europe remains, you know, it remains the biggest trading partner of Ghana, the biggest source of investment. I know that my colleagues who are the ambassadors of the individual member states, you know, the British High Commissioner, the German, the Dutch and so on, they're all interested in bringing their, their, their uh, investors here. President Mahama is in Europe this week. He's in London, he's going to Denmark, he's going to Norway, he's you know, looking at investment opportunities, talking, talking with investors in, 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 in Europe. So I think there's a lot of scope there. 
um, and uh, build, on, build on what you have and develop uh, uh, other sectors which will bring jobs for the future. One thing that you praise us for is uh, a vibrant economy. Mm. It's the same economy that's on the doorstep of the IMF. So mm. I find it a bit contradictory that you're praising an economy that's on the doorstep of IMF. Well, Seeking. I mean, I've been, I've been following from a distance. I've been, as I said, I was in Tanzania until 2004. Ten years I've been away. I've been in Latin America looking at how they're working with the EU. And then I've been in Asia, uh, in Bangladesh, and, and looking at how Asia is working with the, with the EU. And from a distance, I've been seeing Ghana doing well. Growth rates have been high and, and for a sustained period. If you can get to these higher growth rates, you know, above 7 8%, well, these are rates which are similar to what we're seeing in China, in Vietnam, and in other countries which are really moving forward fast. So that's a, that's a good story. Now, uh, just as in Europe, we can face problems. Uh, we faced them in Europe over these 10 years, and, and we're facing them again. So, when problems arise, it's very important that they should be addressed. So we, uh, we welcome the, the, the decision of, of the government to talk with the IMF, to, to look at a program, uh, the commitment to do that. Uh, it's important to look at the macroeconomic uh, situation. You know, things can happen, the prices of commodities can go down, and, and you're, you're suddenly faced with a difficult uh, situation. So it's important that the macroeconomic side would be right and that the questions of management of public finances which we've seen would be addressed and if all that is done then you get investors confidence back again but as I say you know we, we in Europe we've also been looking at these we've had difficulties uh, and uh, the recent trends also see that we've got a lot to do uh, to maintain the fundamentals uh, you know the world is a difficult place uh, uh, and, and, and investors look at investors and markets look at the situation and they, they analyze it. So I think it's important to do th this correction to, to get, get onto that sustained path for, for, for the future. I think it's a good decision to talk with the, the IMF. Um, but of course it very much depends on, on Ghana. I mean it has to, the measures well, have to be, have the, to be implemented. The EU is a major stakeholder for Ghana in terms of aids, grants, loans, investment. The EU is a major stakeholder. Now, uh, like you said, oh, when, I mean, when Greece was struggling, mm. nobody got up and said, oh, Greece is very doing well with the economy. Everybody said, no, these guys are struggling to the point where they were even thinking, should we you know, cut them loose now or should we try? Then there were debates. But then any time the same situation happens, I think you big boys treat the African leaders with kid gloves. Oh, you're doing well. Ghana's doing well. You, you're not doing bad. And I think that's why our leaders are refusing to wake up, because you're treating them with kids' gloves. And maybe you have to tell them, listen, that's not all. You're living an ostentatious life, you can't afford it. Well, you're talking about, I mean, I come from Ireland, so small country, yeah. small country. Um, and we were doing really well. In the, in the late 1990s, there were even books coming out saying, how did you succeed? You know, Ireland managed by being part of the European Union to, to move from being the poorest, one of the poorest countries in the European Union, in a generation we moved to being one of the richest. And people were saying, how did you do it? And then it fell apart for a while. <laughs> and uh, I was explaining how, how clever we were, and, and, and then I had to explain, well, how we got it wrong. We got it wrong, and we did get it wrong. And things got out of control. There were bubbles, there was, there was, there was overconfidence in Ireland, and we then had to take the pain. Uh, and it wasn't easy, uh, and uh, p people's standard of living dropped, and there was there was a lot of of of, of uh, consolidation that had to be done. It was hard. People lost jobs. It was a difficult time, but it was necessary to get back up and be competitive again. So um, I think it's a question of of the country realizing. It's a question of of you know, we were we were we were overconfident, and we realized that things had got out of control. Uh, the public sector got out of control in Ireland. Uh, people were being paid more, and, 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 but in the end, you know, the, the economy has to, the, the real economy has to provide the resources for, for, for civil servants to be paid. So they took, they, they took cuts, and there were, there were people who, who, who had to reconvert into the private sector. So it's not, it's not, it's not, it's the same for, 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 for different countries. What's important is that the country realizes and, and comes together in, 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 in realizing that what needs to be done. It requires people, I think, to put the national interest first ab above politics sometimes when, when things are difficult and do that adjustment and then, then come back again. 
So, I mean, it's not, it's not for me to give lessons. Um, I think I need to be a bit humble. And at the moment, again, the markets are again worried about what's happening in the bigger countries in Europe. So it's, it's, it's not for us to give lessons, but it's for us perhaps to say, look, uh, um, it's, it's the same the world over. Um, we can't give guarantees about investors. Investors will look at opportunities. They will compare different countries. But I think, you know, I was being asked this question earlier, if you're an investor looking at West Africa, and there are, you know, West Africa is close to Europe, and we've, we've then looking around West Africa, Ghana is, 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 is a good destination for, a good destination. And, you know, the fundamentals, I think, are strong. The, the basis is there. It's important to get the management uh, of the economy uh, uh, in, in going on along the right track, and then I think you'll, 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 you'll do well. But you know, adjustments are needed from, from time to time. I've got to bite the bullet. Good. I'll take a break here, and then when I come back, how can I talk to William Hanna and not talk about EP? Stay tuned. Coming straight back. Thank you for staying. Uh, you're having a heart-to-heart -heart with Ambassador William Hanna, a lovely chap behind the cameras, such a lovely man to talk to. <laughs> but uh, EPA is what we want to discuss now. Now, Ambassador, when EPA finally you know, was signed you know, many years ago, but when the deadline was coming that you know, now uh, West Africa was supposed to not conform to the details of the EPA, there was a sudden uproar, especially in Ghana. You know, people say there's absolutely no way we have to agree to this uh, agreement. I was one of the people who said, no way, we can mm -hmm. do this. I mean, these are 27 big boys whose economies will just eat us up. So if we're going to open our borders and say, look, you bring your stuff in and we give our stuff to you, first of all, we have nothing to give you. You know, so the, the scale was just going to tip right against us and that, no, we can't do this. And in any case, why didn't we at least even build and add value to whatever we have so that when the deadline comes, we will at least have something to share? So I was one of the guys who were against it. I'm sure you are for it. Mm. So this is why I'm against it, that you guys will eat us up if we open the floodgates. Why are you for it? So you can eat us up. Well, <laughs> well, uh, Epa, yes, no, I've, I've just, it was interesting in the press conference, I could see a lot of skepticism around yeah. the table. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people who feel that uh, APA is, 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 is not going to be positive. I'm quite convinced. Why, why am I convinced? Um, I worked in, in, in Africa for maybe 20 years, my first 20 years, uh, where we had the system of uh, duty-free access to the European market for all African countries without reciprocity. That was the system which we had for 20 years. And it didn't work. It did not encourage Africa's exports to Europe. Still at the end of those 20 years, uh, the country I was in, for example, Tanzania, was exporting fish and gold and no, no, nothing else. So the, 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 that old approach didn't work. Well, when something doesn't work for 20 years, you have to try something new, uh, a new approach. And EPA was the, was the new approach. Now, it's taken a long time to negotiate, and there have been plenty of debates and debates in Ghana, and things have gone this way and that. But we now have the agreement, and I'm convinced that it is the right way forward, because for me, it's a much more balanced system than what we had in, in, in the past. The first thing is that the market access is, is retained, and that advantage is crucial for the future. Um, and it was important that Ghana should, should continue to have that access. So that, that's the first thing that's important. The second thing is that this opening up is not straight away, so there is still a transition period. I mean, we've had 10 years of a negotiation and another 10 years of a transitional period. So there is that transition. But in the end, it's crucial uh, if Ghana is to move into these areas which we discussed earlier, to bring in investment and to create jobs, it's crucial that, that we should have the possibility of, of bringing in the, the, the goods to create the, 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 the jobs. Take, for example, um, uh, a manufacturing sector. If, you, if you're in manufacturing, you need to bring in equipment. Uh, that equipment is not being built today in Ghana. Maybe one day it's not being built. It's being built in, 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 in Europe. You need to bring in that equipment. You need to bring out that equipment as cheaply as possible to be able to create the goods and to export them. So uh, uh, when, when, when the barriers are, are reduced, it will be possible for investors to bring in their equipment at a lower price. Consumers will also benefit from quality goods at a, at a lower price. Um, the, the old idea, I mean, I know there's a tradition of import substitution, and I know the debates in the 1970s and 80s and 90s, but look, that has not worked. 
And if you look at countries elsewhere in the world, that's what I've done. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to see what they were doing in Latin America. So I went to Uruguay, Paraguay, Brazil, Argentina to see how they were developing. I found when I went to Latin America that actually there wasn't much development in Europe in that area. So I went to Asia, and there it's booming. I was four years in Asia, and I visited countries like China, Vietnam, and so on. These countries are booming. How are they doing it? They're doing it by access to European markets, producing the goods, creating the jobs. That's, that's their strategy. Now, I don't say it's the only strategy for, for Ghana, but the, 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 the reports that I've seen suggest that it could be one arm in, in Ghana's development for the future. And you need the market, you need the investors, you need to bring in the equipment, you need to create the jobs. These things go together and, and they ha have led, they take the example of China and Vietnam, they have brought millions of people out of poverty in the last 10 or 15 years. Look at the Millennium Development Goals. Which countries have managed to bring people out of poverty? They are the countries, most of them in Asia, who have succeeded in that new strategy. They've taken advantage of the markets. We buy their goods and we invest in those countries and everybody benefits. So it can be done. That the, the, the developing a country through an export strategy can be done and Ghana can do it. I know that companies who've invested in Asia are also looking at Africa, they're looking at Kenya, they're looking at Ethiopia, they're looking further afield. Uh, and Ghana is one of the countries I'm sure they will look at. So I think, I think we have to get away from the fear of the past, get away of that I'm afraid that if I open one day, what will happen? I don't think that will really happen. You remember the, you remember the millennium bug, the Y2K? We were all afraid of it. It didn't happen. Move away from that and look at what are the opportunities. What do young people in Ghana today need? Uh, listening to the radio, I hear they need jobs. Who's going to provide those jobs? Who is going to set up the factories to, to provide those jobs? And where would the manufacturing goods go? Europe is, is interested in, in, in doing that and moving into different sectors. I think if you, if you think of the future rather than the past, if you look forward and you look at what some competitors go and visit, other, as I've been able to do, go and visit other countries, see what their strategies are, you'll find that, uh, that opening up is not a risk, is actually the best way forward. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm convinced, I know that there's a lot of skepticism, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk and we'll have discussions, uh, but I see it as, as, a, as a way forward, and I see it as a win-win. As a uh, yes, we're interested. I mean, our companies want to do business. They want to make money. Uh, it, it, it's a, it, I see it as a common interest. Uh, I, and I think that the, the strategy of welcoming investment, rather than fearing it, uh, welcoming a lowering of the costs, so that people get better quality goods is, is a good strategy. And I think that the strategy of creating industries behind the barriers, yes, it was tried, um, but I don't think that it succeeded. And I think a, a small country needs to have markets, both the European market, which you have, you have access to the European market, but also the regional ECOWAS market. That there's a big market in ECOWAS that Ghana can do more and more to, I, to exploit. And I see that Ghana's exports to ECOWAS are, are rising. I think both regionally in ECOWAS and in Europe. With those two markets, there's a lot of, uh, of future for, for Ghana. So I know, I know people remain skeptical, but I think having seen how other countries have succeeded, that export development uh, strategy is one way forward. It's not the only way, but it's one way forward. If you complement that to the natural resources which Ghana I, has, if I come in here, your country will do well. Uh, where we are now, in signing this agreement, listening to you, we lock ourselves into a vicious cycle I want to be able to give that. So bear in mind that I'm bringing, No, no, you, I'm bringing, secure, I'm you secure your market. For, you secure your market. That's vital. But you see, I'm bringing in machines from EU to process my raw materials. Let's say if I bought a gold refinery. Now I can refine gold for probably hundreds and hundreds of years because I have got gold in that abundance. However, I just need that, just that one machine to last me a century before I even change it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to give up all my gold, just so that I can get one machine in. Why are you giving up your gold? What you're trying to do is add value in this country. So, for example, instead of exporting raw materials, adding value. If you want to add value, that's through manufacturing around the, for example, the agri-sector. We're only able to that do that now because if, as soon as we wave off levies of goods coming in, it becomes very difficult to compete. No, I mean, at the no, 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 no. I don't see why it does. 
What you need to compete is an investor comes in, right? You need to bring in investors. You need to bring in welcome investors. That's important. Right? You need to go into joint ventures, I mean, with, with Ghanaians and, and Europeans. Okay. You need to set up uh, uh, factories. They need equipment. But by the time the goods come equipment. from e uh, European to Accra with no levies, they become, even, even with levies, we are struggling to compete. As at the moment, even with levies, it's becoming. Well, I think you have to look at what areas you're, you know, what we're talking about and what, what certain specific areas that Ghana is, is competing in. But I don't see. For a start, as I say, there is a long period. Ghana is not opening up tomorrow. It is a long, long uh, period of, of, of adjustment. But in the longer term, the benefits for me clearly outweigh those disadvantages. I, I really don't see it. I don't see why people are so afraid. Um, what are they afraid of? Are they afraid of competition? If they're afraid of competition, then probably they're protecting high-cost manufacturing, low-quality goods. I mean, let's, let's be clear. Competition is good for consumers, it's good for Ghanaians. Bring in goods at, 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 at the right price and make people compete. I don't think any manufacturer should be, should be scared. Well, I don't think anything proves that it does. I don't think, and, and, and what about the, the absence of investment that doesn't come because of that? I mean, I, I don't know, I come back to the example I know, Ireland. Ireland could never have created jobs for its people without bringing in the investors from outside. They came in to manufacture computers. I mean, the big computer companies came into Ireland. Why did they come in to manufacture in Ireland? They became, came in because Ireland had access to the European market. If it had just been on its own, all on its own, no one would have bothered. And we would have continued to have our main export people, which was our export over the, <laughs> over the centuries. But because, because Ireland was part of a wider market, investors came in in the 1980s, 1990s. So the market is, is crucial. Now, Ghana has the same access to the European market as Ireland. The same, without any duties, without, so the same. So if you're manufacturing in Ghana, you've got access to that market of 500 million people without any tariffs or duties. That's an enormous opportunity. And I've seen how other countries around the world, when they see that, they take advantage of it. But taking advantage means you, you have to work in, 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 in partnership, and, and, and everybody, everybody gains from that. Under the EPA, uh, the European companies can come into Ghana and bid from local contributors, mm. so that uh, we're not allowed to deal with China. You, know, you have to give uh, you know, favoritism to uh, companies coming from the EU. I don't market. think so. I don't think so. Well, I mean, you are allowed to bid locally. So let's say if I was uh, a nice hospital yeah. equipment and uh, the local hospital needed beds. But how could you... Well, okay. You, you could come in. But why, how could well, Europe be more competitive from the outside? I mean, obviously, Ghanaians should be competitive locally. No, no they wouldn't because I have to come and buy it from you. You would have to buy it? Yes, them. because we don't make the hospital beds or the equipment. So ah. I have to so, come and buy it from me. So, so what do you, you think? So if you bypass me and come and sell directly to my hospital, that's the answer. Of the but uh, who, who are you? Who are you getting the best from at the moment? Who if you say Ghana isn't isn't making them, right? Yeah. So you have to you have to have. Them. Where, where do they come from? Well, they come from outside. They come from EU. They come from America. Come from China. Anywhere that I see. Okay. Fit. So you want to get the cheapest at the best quality? No, I don't want you to come and make it open. Why not? Because I'll buy from you and sell to my local hospital. So I buy from you, I'm the middleman, I buy from you and sell to my local hospital. But I don't want you to come from Belfast mm. and sell directly there. What do I do? Well, we're not manufacturing anymore in Belfast, actually. That's, that's, an, that's, another, that's another part of it. We used to, 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 no, no, we used to manufacture, but actually we've moved out of that. Most of the manufacturing now, it used to be in Belfast, mm -hmm. is now in uh, Asia. The, the, uh, the ships that we used to build are being built elsewhere. The, uh, the uh, machinery we used to build is being built elsewhere. Things move on. Things move on. And we've now moved into other areas, which are important services and, and, and so on. So it, for me, it's a, the dynamic goes in a, in a positive direction, but you're still seeing the, 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 you're still seeing the risks. We need, we need to discuss it further. I, I, think the, I think if you look at it, the advantages outweigh the, the, the disadvantages. Um, it, it, you're looking, you're looking in the term, but you should look, I think, in terms of the, the interests of young people in Ghana to have jobs in the future. How are they going to get their jobs? If you start from that angle, I think you see a different picture. I think you see a different picture. 
and, 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 and you see us moving, uh, say, in a way which is creating opportunities for the future. And that's, I think, the way that we have to go. First, then we need to look at uh, people and which, you know, uh, completely, uh, probably, you know, ruin our chances if we have any. So I'm going to take a break here. When I come back, we'll look at Ebola and the chances we have in bringing in investment. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying. Uh, very interesting and educated conversation. I'm sure you agree with that. Uh, talking to Ambassador William Hanna. And I'm looking at the challenges that the uh, West Africa region is now faced with, and that's Ebola, and at the back of it, trying to get investment in. I mean, that must be a huge, huge challenge. Well, I, mean, I think we were talking about this earlier, but uh, Ebola is, is uh, a huge new challenge that we're all facing. Uh, and uh, as your president said in the, in the General Assembly, it's not a problem just for one country or just for Africa, it's a problem for the world. And that is absolutely true. Uh, and uh, now I, th I think some time has been lost. I think everybody realizes that time was lost uh, earlier in the year, but now I think everybody is, is, is realizing how big a threat it is, mm -hmm. uh, but n not only to the lives of, of, of people, but also to the economies uh, of, 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 of the region and, and wider fields. So I've seen, in, certainly in September and October, uh, the international uh, response uh, gearing up um, and Ghana has played a role, I think, in, in, uh, certainly in the region and internationally in, in realizing that it's really important to have a, a response regionally and, and, and a wider field. Uh, Europe is getting involved. Um, I was preparing some remarks last Friday and the total money from European Union last Friday was 380 million euros. Uh, it's actually more, it's, it's actually half a billion euros has been uh, set aside by our member states, our countries, and by, by the European Union centrally to address the problem. Most of that money is going to the most affected countries, Sierra Leone, Liberia, uh, and Guinea. Uh, other funds will be available for, 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 for other countries, but it's scaling up the effort. It's a huge problem, um, uh, bringing people in to, 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 to attack it. Uh, and, uh, and it's good, but it's good, I think, that there's been a growing awareness uh, of what needs to be done. Um, I think it's important, here in, here in Ghana, it's, I think it's important to do everything to be prepared, and preparedness, and I think there's been some progress, some new measures taken last week to, you know, to, to have good coordination, be, be well coordinated, and perhaps, perhaps also to test some of the systems. You, know, you need to have a, when you have systems against a fire, you need to test them yeah. to see that they work. So I think it's important to do work there uh, to be prepared. Um, I think the world is realizing what a big problem uh, it is now, uh, a little bit late, but uh, um, beginning to get its act together, uh, and we're very concerned uh, and showing that concern. It's not, I mean, it's affecting countries, you've seen cases in Europe, you've seen cases in, in, in America, um, and it shows, I don't know, it shows after, when, when, when we get this out of control, you know, what, under control, what, what lessons do you learn? You learn that the world is so interconnected uh, today that problems in one part do uh, affect others, whether it's Ebola or whether it's other threats to, to peace and security and to economic development. So is the EU working in, uh, with UMA or UNDP? Yes, we're, well, we're all trying to, we've perhaps different roles. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, some of our member states are particularly concerned. The UK with uh, Sierra Leone and, and the France with Guinea, are, they're, they're sort of trying to spearhead the efforts in those two countries. We're also working with the United Nations uh, they're trying to coordinate their, their activities here. We're working with the World Health Organization. Uh, we have our emergency, our emergency wing of the European Union is called ECHO, uh, uh, um, uh, which is you know, fast, urgent assistance. They're very much involved in the countries which are most affected. But we're also looking at other things. And in fact, as we speak, our foreign ministers of all of the European Union are meeting together in Luxembourg to address the question of Ebola and to look at what we could do, to look at the question of, of evacuation of, of uh, medical personnel, to look at uh, air systems and, and, and different ways in which we could support the international effort. It takes everybody working together, it's complicated, but it takes a huge international effort. Uh, and uh, the UN, I think, is playing a, a leading role, uh, WHO as well. So 
everybody has to work together to... to flights, flights ban from Ebola areas on the table, thinking of... I think that the, I think that the feeling uh, is, is that it's important to isolate the disease and not the countries. Uh, if, you, if you want to attack the, the disease, you've got to, you've got to keep access uh, open. So I think that's very much the, uh, the feeling, and that was indeed what I think uh, your president was saying, Kofi Annan was saying that as well, I think. Um, uh, we, need to, we need to address uh, uh, the, 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 the problem and that needs, you need to be able to get people in and, in and out. Um, so they'll be looking more at what we can do in a positive way rather than a negative way. What we can do in a positive way to, to fight this, uh, this, this disease. African Cup of Nation is due in January and they are looking for uh, you know, countries to go and play you know, the African Cup of Nations. And there's been a bit of uproar saying, look, guys, hold on, you know, there's this disease looming, and the mm. last thing you want to do is move people about. I don't know if mm. the EU has you know, advised in any way. You're talking about football, Cup yeah, of Nations. Yeah, well, yes, uh, I, I hope that uh, uh, football can continue. I hope that things can continue. And I'd like to see Ghana doing well <laughs> and better than in the World Cup. We were, we were disappointed. We were looking to Ghana to do so well. I was in, uh, I was in Bangladesh watching the World Cup, and everybody was was supporting Ghana, so so I've come here to see some good football. I hope I can, <laughs> and uh, let's let's hope we can get to to that. But I mean, the, the, the clearly the you know the, the, the Ebola is it's important to to, to address uh, all concerns there, and it would be nice to be able to focus on on those things which unite us, not only in Africa but worldwide. Worldwide, worldwide. it would be nice to do that, and I hope we'll be able to do that but uh, a lot of focus on attacking this d disease, uh, all of us working together at the moment. Democracy, we've congratulated so, uh, so much on our democracy, and we pat ourselves on the back. But I always ask this question, uh, has African chosen the right democracy, or have we just copied the Western type of democracy and said, there you go, that's a carbon copy, follow it? Well, uh I think it's, it's, no, it's very interesting for me. As I said, I came down at the end of the 90s uh, and then to look again at Ghana 15 years later. And I think what I see is a you know, consolidation of democracy. It's a Ghanaian, uh, it's your own system. I mean, it's a system which takes from previous systems, perhaps a Westminster system at the beginning, uh, and then certain elements of a presidential system. You have a constitution, which I think is, you know, is your, 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 your approach. Uh, I think there are many aspects of it which are which are which are important. I, I'm I'm impressed by the you know also by the, the separation of powers, the independence of the judiciary, the, the the role of civil society, strong civil society in in this country. Um, I'm 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 there are there are I think you lots of the the, the pillars of democracy are, are are there. Of course, it's always important to keep working uh, in the future. Elections are important, but they're only part of it. Elections, you know, to, to have elections properly held and to have uh, in institutions which look after elections. All, all of those elements are, are important, but it's your, it's your model, uh, and I'm, in, I'm intrigued by it and to try and under, understand it. I see elements that I know from other countries and elements that are, are different. But uh, I, I think I, I, I get the, talking to Ghanaians here, I get the strong attachment to, to, to that model. Um, of course, in a democracy, uh, uh, it, it's, it's an open system, it's a, it's a freer system than, than some systems you see elsewhere in the, in the world, and that creates all sorts of, all sorts of challenges. Um, how to get a consensus around you know, addressing national challenges is important, rather than having everything becoming a, a political issue. Uh, that's, 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 uh, uh, I don't know, as you go towards elections, does everything get political? You know? and of course, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a risk, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, think, I think we do see in this region of West Africa uh, and in Africa in general, we see Ghana as, 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 a, as a really interesting, good example to, to, to other countries. Uh, and it's important to, to, to maintain that and to, and to strengthen that, and that's something we, we will do through, through our dialogue. So, uh, you know, who, who was it who said about democracy? It was the, it was the best of, of bad systems. No system is perfect, <laughs> but I think democracy is the one which we attach great value to. Uh, if you want to become a member of the European Union, you have to show your democratic credentials, and we're concerned that de democracy should always be upheld in Europe. Some, you know, some parties that are elected in Europe are less democratic than others, so we, we have our work to do. But uh, um, we, we, we continue to think it's the best system, and, and, and we're happy to see it 
doing well in Ghana. A AU started, or you know, OAU started before the EU, and now the EU has formed and overtaking. What are we not getting right so that the AU can also take off? The AU. Uh, I don't know enough about the AU to, uh, really to, to, to answer that. I know that when I was in Tanzania, one, 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 some of the leaders uh, from Tanzania were, were, were some of the first people who, who, who moved to the new AU following the, the change from the OAU and, and, and so on. And I've seen that we've been involved in the European Union in supporting that process. In fact, a few years ago, we had a lot of our, our officials from Europe came down and, and had, had big discussions. We'd like to support the, the, the role of the AU. For example, in Ebola, we're supporting a mission that the AU is putting in place to fight Ebola. We're giving some funds to that. That's, that's an initiative from the AU. So um, we, we, we want to support these organizations. Of course, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to get countries to work together. Yeah. We, we, you, know, you mentioned, we're 20, actually, we're 28 now. I think the latest count were 28 countries. To get 28 countries round a table to agree on a program is difficult. Yeah. But we believe it's really crucial. It's the way forward. Um, as I say, so many problems today, international problems, they can't be solved by one country alone. Uh, and so we'll support that AU process uh, and, and, uh, and different initiatives that AU might take. And of course, there's, there's, there's a lot that can be done there. But uh, there we have it, Re working regionally, not easy. Uh, our, our job in Europe, trying to get everybody to agree on, on common rules, is not easy. But we, we think the, the payoff at the end is greater. And I, that's why on the EPA, the payoff of working regionally is, 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 is greater in the long run. But it requires a lot of investment, a lot of time. Way forward for EU and Ghana, finally. Sorry? The way forward for the, the way forward. EU and Ghana. For the EU and Ghana. Yeah. I think it's, it's, a, a, it's a working together. Um, we've always talked about our cooperation as working together. I'd like to see it as it's, 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 it's an equal partnership. It's, it's, I think we have to be honest and open about, uh, about our interests. We, we talk about our interests and our values. I think we share values, democracy, human rights. These are values we share. These are universal values. We share those, and those, those are important. That's at the heart of our... our, our our relationship. We also have interests. We, have, we, have, we, we want to make money, we want to invest, we want to create jobs in Europe and in Ghana. So I think it's a question of looking at that and seeing how can we, how can we bring that together. Values and interests together. I think if we move to that sort of relationship, that's, that's one I think that people get it. They, they say, yeah, that makes sense. Um, moving away f perhaps from, 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 from old ways of looking at things. So I'm, I'm, I'm still focusing on the future, <laughs> even though I'm an old man now, but my, I have my, my children and my grandchildren, they keep me on the ball. Uh, they're looking for these opportunities. And uh, uh, one of my children, my son, came down and uh, spent three, three, four months in Ghana uh, a few years ago, living in, out in Takoradi somewhere. So he's going to come down, and he's really interested in coming down and visiting the country. Well, he's most welcome. So we keep looking at the future. Well, Ambassador William Hanna, thank you very much. Folks, thanks for watching. And as I say, tomorrow we'll be back to do it all over again. Thank you.